Okay, so I've made my PDF from uh, AutoCAD, and it looks like this. So now I want to take that into Photoshop to do a little bit of rendering, and really just to give some graphics to make it more presentable. Um, now, yeah, I'll just switch over to Photoshop. Okay, so I've got that open already. And what I'm going to do to start off is open the PDF. So that's the most important thing. Don't try to insert it or place it. There is a place option in Photoshop, but it's not the right thing to use here. So here we just go File, Open, and then Browse to find the file that you've just made. So where's that? Go oh, sorry, I'm on the wrong drive. Oh, no. Sorry, here we are. And... Here we go, restaurant plan. Okay, so the most important thing here is that you choose media box. So guys, um, okay, so again, crop to media box up the top, that's really helpful. And then make sure the mode is on RGB color. We might flick back to grayscale sometimes, so just make sure it stays on RGB color. And if you're wondering what these uh, sizes are, you don't need to change them, but I'll just show you, if we change it to centimetres, it is A1, which is coming up as inches. So that's it, I'll click OK, and now I've got my Photoshop file, now, I forgot to grab your screens, I'll just do that. Um, and then, it can be very hard to look at when you first bring it in because it's got that transparency. But that's what we want. If I zoom in, you'll see the lines are coming perfectly. And we just need to make it maybe a bit easier for us to work with, because of our eyes. So down here in the layers, I'm going to click to make a new layer. And so here I've got a new layer called layer 2. And I'm going to drag that under layer 1 and rename it. I'm going to call it white background. You don't need to use white backgrounds. You can use black backgrounds or other coloured backgrounds, but at first uh, white might be good. And then under uh, edit, sorry, I'll go to fill, because that's a quick way of, um, of uh, applying a colour fill. Right, and you can choose white from there. But since you've been using Photoshop for a while now, I might start to show you some of the shortcuts. So does anyone know the shortcut for fill? Alt backspace. Alt backspace. Yeah. yeah, it's a great one. Okay, so it uses your foreground colour and just fills. I use it all the time because the paint bucket works a little bit differently. So a lot of people use the paint bucket to fill, but it, it does work a bit differently to a regular fill. So again, remember that one, really useful. Alt backspace uh, to do a quick fill. But it uses only the foreground colour. So, uh, yeah. Okay, so now layer one is the layer with my line work on it, and so I'll call it that. All right, so then just maybe to go over some of the basic rendering techniques. So let's say we want to apply a, uh, a material and start to get an idea how the breakup of materials in a space like this can divide spaces. That can be a really uh, helpful thing, even when you're doing concept design. So maybe. Here, uh, I want to show my material from uh, that dash line onwards. So I'm going to select with a uh, rectangular marquee, click and drag and select that area. Uh, maybe just up to here and I'll do a different material uh, for the other part. Okay, now I've selected too far. That really wouldn't be a problem anyway, but uh, I'm going to go over that. But uh, then I'll use, uh, just so you can see, Alt with the marquee again can be used to take away from your selection. So hopefully you're all starting to get used to those basic selection options you've got. So shift and alt, it is in, uh, in Photoshop. Other programs just to be confusing use different option keys for that. Okay, so again with alt I'll get the top part maybe tidied up a little bit more as well now that I can see it a bit better. That might be. Oh no, gone too far. Okay, so not a problem. 
shift and I can add to it again. Now later you'll see, I'll show you how to use masks and then you don't have to worry so much about this, but uh, for now, uh, doing the list selection, it's all right. So I've got my selection, but now I need to remember to make a layer. So I don't want to render on that white background layer, I want to keep it separate. So I'm going to make a new layer and I'll call this uh, floor. Uh, well, let's just do a color for now. We'll keep the textures maybe for later. We definitely want to look at putting in textures and that's a great thing for interiors, being able to put on uh, really nice detailed textures that show you timber or whatever nice materials you want. But for now, we'll just look at color fills and that can do a lot. So here we've got the uh, color swatches and I know Saul's shown you how to load and use swatches, hasn't he? I'm sure so, so I'm talking about that. So make sure you're using swatches. You know, when you get a good color, it's nothing worse than uh, forgetting exactly what it was and uh, having to make it again. So I've got my color and then I can just, um, again, hold the backspace. So remember you can also adjust the opacity of a layer to fade it. And uh, that can be a really helpful thing, especially when you're doing concept planning, just to be able to break up your spaces with, uh, with color fills. So here maybe I want to have another one, so again I can just do another rectangular marquee. Here I'm going to be a bit messier deliberately, so I can show you how to cover things with the walls. So if they, maybe I'll just go up to here for now, and, uh, and again get a colour. It's okay if you want to do a few colours on the one layer, that's fine. Um, don't go overboard with the colours, the colours of your colour scheme do, um, sorry, of your diagrams do matter. And the trick with diagrams is to keep the colour palette fairly simple. And uh, then you, there's the real art to doing really beautiful diagrams. Okay, so I'll just keep that. They're almost complementary colours. I know it's not quite, but, but close. And then, um, okay, so then maybe I want to fill in the walls. So I'm going to make another layer. And we'll call this a uh, wall fill. And there, I'm going to show you a good little trick. I want to select in between the line work um, lines that I've brought in from AutoCAD and I want to ignore uh, things on the other layers. So I'm going to go to uh, firstly deselect on my select menu. You can choose deselect, control D is the shortcut. Then I'll go to the magic wand and then turn off sample all layers. Then I'm going to make sure I'm on the line work layer, not my new wall fill layer just yet. I'm going to line work and then I can click in between the lines. I missed it, so I'll try again. Missed it again. I'm going to zoom in. Uh, oh sorry, contiguous needs to be on. So here you can see on the magic wand options, again I've turned sample all layers off but contiguous should be on. Contiguous means that it's all got to be connected. So now when I click inside the walls, you can see it's gone around and just selected in between those lines and not outside. So that's it. And then I'll go and set my colours back to black and white with that little button that you've got there. And then again, I'll backspace to fill. That's it. So already we've got uh, you know, a plan that's a lot more presentable than the other one was. But... Now I've realised, oh God, I want these lines that I had uh, on the demolition layer not there anymore. I want to take them away. Now you can do it the hard way and take them out in, in Photoshop and that, that works, but that's definitely the hard way. The easier way, usually, is to go back to AutoCAD and hide them there. So I'm going to just go to my viewport so that you can see uh, my layers and I'm going to turn the demo layer off and the uh, above layer as well. I don't really want that either. So now I've got a nice simple plan and I'll go back now and uh, bring in some things that uh, I also want to show you as well. So on the model tab now, I don't also, no, don't want to make it too hard. I'm just going to do it on the layout tab. So in the viewport though, really important that you have double click to make the viewport active. If you want to try the next thing, I'm going to go on the, still on the home tab,
to the inset panel and then more options. So insert lets you bring in blocks. Have you used blocks at all in AutoCAD? No, you might not have come across them yet. So blocks are basically like grouped objects. So essentially for library type uh, elements, things you bring in from, from libraries. So here again, insert more options and then browse and then I'll show you where the library have you been shown where the libraries that we've set up for you on the P drive are? Yeah. So here under student resources, your P drive, interior design, you've got AutoCAD library. And that's a massive resource of blocks that we've set up for you to use. So I'll show you briefly if you go to blocks 2D, you've got all these different categories and there are lots of things in there. Office fit out, oh no, sorry, that one's uh, for JPEGs and things, but if we go to bathroom, uh, WCs, let's see, we've got all these toilets, go to basins, got lots of basins, hand basins and uh, obviously kitchen ones as well, but no, that's bathroom, sorry, so there'll be uh, hand basins. And then uh, if we go back to kitchen, uh, sorry, kitchen laundry, uh, sinks, and we've got some more sinks there. And there's a lot more to it than that. So AutoCAD 2D, even more. So these are all things that are standard in uh, most of your projects. Stoves, all sorts of furniture and symbols. And that's a huge time saver. So if you're drawing all those things from scratch. So here, again, P Drive, Interior Design, AutoCAD Library. I'm going to go to 29 blocks. And I've put some blocks there for you to use for this project. So we've got some different tables and chairs that are really useful, even if not going to use that style of table and chair, because they're a bit traditional. Um, it's good to get an idea of the size of those things and how much room they're going to take up and how you can then you know, fit people into your spaces. So I'll start with this table 4S2D, which is a four-seater. 2D just means it's a 2D drawing. And then I can just go along and uh, place it and then copy that to get as many as you need. So that can help with your planning just to get an idea of size. Mm -hmm. um, and even if you're going to trace over it, that's really um, helpful. And scale is one of those things you've really got to establish early on in your design projects. Um, there's a two-seater one. Okay, so again, you can copy that. I'll uh, again just select it, hit copy, and get a few of those. Cool, two seaters. I get relegated to the edge of the wall normally, but uh, try not to do that. It's uh, not the best, but that's often where they end up. And then I'll just show you the last one I put there for you um, the six seater. So that's a rectangular one. And, uh, but again, that will work in many spaces. Alright, so what I'm going to do now, I'm going to zoom, but that'll only work if the viewport's locked. So make sure if you're going to start zooming in the viewport, lock it first, and then when you zoom it doesn't change the scale. Okay, so now I want to bring those changes into Photoshop. So I'll, uh, oops, I'll again save the file in case something goes wrong. And back to the main menu, just do the same as I did before. File print, continue. And I'm not even going to change any options here, it's all set up ready to go. So I'm just going to click OK. Oh no, what's it going to do? So I forgot I'd change it to print. Yes, OK, so I do need to change something. I'll, uh, I'll cancel that. But uh, so here I need to change it back to DWG to PDF and uh, then OK. So, uh, okay, so there you can see it's uh, asking me to choose a file name. I'm just going to click on the file that I'd chosen earlier, but to make that work I've got to make sure that the file's closed in uh, Acrobat. So now I can uh, save over it. 
Okay, so there you can see I've got now a PDF uh, with the changes. So then the final step is to go back to Photoshop and bring the changes into this Photoshop file. Right, so here again I'm going to go File, Open, choose Mesh Job Plan again. Now, how have you been shown to move things from one layer to another? One file to another, sorry. Have you been shown any tricks to that? Okay, so there are a couple of options. Firstly, instead of opening the file, I could have gone File, uh, Place, Embedded. That does work with PDF. So I can just do that. And then uh, I'm going to go Crop to media box again, just like I did before, and then OK. Notice how it just overlays it in the right place automatically. Because we, yeah, so we're using the same print setup as I had uh, for the previous one. And then here, place the file, that's fine. So then all I need to do is turn off the old layer. Now unfortunately I was stupid enough to put my line work on that layer, the, sorry not the line work, the fill, the black fill. So I need to do that again. And what I should have done is uh, what I'm going to do now, and that's select and uh, do that on the line work layer, but then make yet another layer for my, oh sorry, I did make a layer for my wall fill, I just didn't use it before, So, So now I'll go to my wall fill layer and then um, alt backspace or do it from the menu and, uh, and fill it. There we are. And then you could go and do, um, do your shadows. So maybe, I mean, you don't want to go too far with shadows at this point, but I really want to give you an idea about that because it's not that hard once you've seen how to do it. So let's say I want to get shadows uh, under the tables and chairs. Or maybe that's a bad example because that would be a bit hard. So I will just want to get shadows for the wall. Yeah, I know, it would look good, but it's going to take a bit more time. So I'll do the walls first and I'll, I'll show you the tables and chairs next time. Um, I'll definitely show you that, but it's uh, a bit harder. So um, the walls are a good one because I've got this wall fill layer. So the secret here is to use the blends, which you get by double clicking on the layer um, thumbnail. And then you'll see you've got a, uh, a drop shadow uh, layer. Here we are, drop shadow. Um, and so that's on. So you can see there when I turn the preview off, on and off. It's putting a drop shadow on. But the angle makes it hard to read. So I'm going to change the angle there to roughly 45. Just roughly, 47 is okay. And then I'll play with the distance. And then the spread is a nice one to get softer shadows, especially. I can play with the spread. The size as well is a nice way of softening the shadows. It's, uh, it softens the edges, essentially. I won't go into it too much, but there you can see. So that now, that's without, and that's with. So that's an automatic shadow. And that's a nice thing to try. Um, what I'll show you with tables and chairs is that you can paint in your own shadows. But drop shadows are a great thing to try. When they work, they're good. And then the other advantage if you're using a blend, in other words, the layer styles, you can just turn them off if you don't want them. So uh, that's a simple thing you can try and it's good for preliminary drawings because you don't want to spend too long on shadows and things like that for, for prelim and, and concept drawings. Okay, so very, very last thing. Then now I'll open up InDesign just to check that you're okay with that.
Okay, so what size are you making the drawings that you've been taking in to show Todd? Why not? So you are doing the 1A1. Okay, all right, we'll do that. Yeah. That's easier, yeah. Yeah, yeah, fair enough, that's fine. Yeah. So you just need to yeah, do A1, that's all right. Because uh, I was going to say, you could reduce them down to A3 um, and make them 1 to 100, um, just to show him things. But yeah, yeah. Probably, yeah, yeah. And you do need to start using, yeah, exactly, yeah. And you've got to start using large formats anyway, so it's good to try that. Um, but yeah, I know it's, it's a pain carrying around big drawings. Uh, so I'm going to go in InDesign, Create New. And then when you go into the print presets, you won't have A1. Where? Am I blind? Yeah, I wish they'd put it in, but yeah, yeah, unfortunately, yeah, A3 is the biggest, unfortunately. So, um, that's okay. Then, you can put in the size it should be. So, anyone of you play in this? Close? Yeah. yeah. You'll know these off by heart pretty soon. Yeah. Yeah, yeah the width is 841, exactly. The height. No, four exactly. That's it. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's it. Yep, that's it. There we go. So this option is the main one that causes problems. Facing pages, just turn that off. It's useless for us. We don't need to make books, so we don't need to use facing pages. That's it. Create. And we're gonna have we can do multiple pages if you know you need more pages, but I'll just do one and add the other pages later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So as you go, it's easy to add pages in InDesign. It's one of the best things about InDesign. Yeah. You can just go layout, pages, add pages. So, uh, sorry, it's just frozen. I'll just give it a second. And then under File, Place. So to bring in other files uh, from other programs, that's the best option. But before I do that, I'm just going to quickly switch back to Photoshop because I don't think I'd save my file with a name. So I'm going to go File, Save As. And I'm not going to change the name. I'm just going to make sure it's a Photoshop file that I'm saving. Right, because the last one was a PDF file. So I can keep the same name because it's a new, uh, different format. So I've saved as PSD. And then I'll go back to uh, InDesign. And again, file, place, and choose the Photoshop desktop plan, not the PDF. Yeah, so I want the Photoshop, really important. And then I'm just going to click the place. I'm going to try and get it inside the printable area, but I think it's just going to fall out. Yeah, still close, but uh, not quite. Anyhow, yeah, that's how it has to fit. So there we are. And then now I can use these frame borders to essentially crop the plan. So frames are really useful, but I know at first they can be a bit uh, fiddly. So notice I've just, yeah. Well, kind of. It's the, uh, it's the slug or whatever I think they call it, or the bleed lines yeah. or something. So it's there for the printable, allowable printable area, but it's not coming from the printer. It's a standard size around the whole page. But yeah, it is for the printable area pretty much. Yeah. So, uh, so there we are. So I've got the drawing where I want it. Uh, I thought I might show you how to scale it, but since you're doing A1 and you probably want to keep it at 1 to 50, maybe I won't show you that. But let me know. Have you thought about scaling things in InDesign or ever tried to and had issues? I Ah, right. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, I know, it's, it's a bit fiddly. But once you know how, it's not too bad. So I might show you with another image. I want to keep the plan as it is. Because I don't want that to scale. Because it's 1 to 50, and I really don't want to change that at all. But I'm going to go and get some other things. Because you're probably at the stage where you're presenting research, and you want precedents and other images that you're going to put into your panels to show people. So file place again, and I'll get some images that I've got of uh, some restaurants in America. 
Um, so, where did I put them? Ah, oh, yes, here. Yeah, are they photos? Yeah, most of them. Not all of them. So th th these are that, those, that, these are renders. They're renders. They're all renders. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, that's that's another render. Yeah. So uh, anyhow, I'll get the, some of the photos though. These are prelim renders. So you can see I start out like this. They're all the rough renders. This is from 20 years ago, so it's all a bit daggy and the red. They made me do the red. Red was in then, but still that red was too much. But for blues clubs, that is kind of the standard colour, unfortunately. Anyway, so let's say I want this one, and uh, maybe... Oh, no, I'll do the stairs. They're not bad. So, um, again, old-fashioned, but it was an old-fashioned club I was doing. So, uh, so I'll place it, and that's not the size I want. So what people then try to do is stretch the edges, and it will work sometimes. You can see there it's scaling the image. But that's also not what I want, because it's not changing the frame. Now, when I stretch it, it's cropping it. So what's the deal there? Why is it changing? Exactly. Exactly, exactly. So the key is that you want to adjust both, the frame and the image together. So there's a little shortcut for that. Yeah, and you can do that. That's, that's what I used to do years ago when I was starting on InDesign. But then once you know the shortcut, there's, yeah, there's two options. You've got this free transform tool. So that will always scale both of them together. What? Yep. That's so cool. So that's a great tool because you can use that for lots of other things as well. So it's just this one here. Free transform. Yep. But I'm going to show you a better way. Yep. Yep, you need, that's always there in InDesign. So what I'm going to do instead though is show you an even better way. With the direct, direct selection tool, the trick is hold down control and then it works like the free transform tool. Yeah, that's the key. So hold down control and then also if you hold down shift, it keeps it in proportion. So without shift it does this, which I don't want, but with shift it locks the proportions. So that's it. Oh, yeah. So it's just that control option. Yeah. So lots of other great options in InDesign. It, it is a great program. So with Alt, you can easily duplicate things. And holding down Shift, you can copy them in a straight line. And uh, you know, all those shortcuts. Definitely a huge time saver in InDesign. And it's nice sometimes to have identical sized frames. And then you can just change out the image that's inside them for another one. So here I've got the frame selected and I'll go back to place again and get another image. And then I can adjust the image to fit the frame. And, uh, and so it might need to be cropped. But that's okay because uh, we've got the frame there for that. Right, so little things like that I know can make your life much easier in uh, InDesign. Final thing I'll tell you there is that the... Um, text, I'm sure you've all worked it out, uses you know, a font and a, and a size, so I'll get a better font than that. Not Bear House, no, no, no. Uh, I want Futura, but we don't have Futura. So uh, uh, let's just get um, Tahoma or something. Tahoma or... Um, Veranda? Yeah, that way. Okay, so you can you can work like that and uh, and set the sizes. Yeah, but so that's very small. And here you can change the font size as you go, and that works. But another time saver with InDesign is that when you get a text set up that you want to use again, make a style out of it. So up here, the little A, you can go new character style, 
and then I can say, right, this is my body. And then I'll go and uh, bring it down, and then I'll make a, oops, yep, make a heading. And then go back and make a style for that. And so I'll call this heading. Exactly, exactly, that's right. Yep. Exactly. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So I, I actually like to mix up serif fonts and uh, and sans serif. So I'm going to get a serif font now. Uh, in other words, one with the tails. And uh, we should have. I'll just use times. Yeah, I, I mean, I use Futura and um, and Helvetica, but we can't add fonts to these computers. No, no, unfortunately, it's, it's virtually impossible. So, uh, I know, I know. Well, but for a serif font, it's all right, but yeah, no, it's a bit, uh, well, it's been overused. So, um, yeah. So, but the great thing here, I can just go and change that, and it's going to change all the headings, the, the whole one heading, but still. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't know about the gothic, but I'll I'll do it for now. Doesn't matter. Okay, so yes, that means now if I go and do some more text, of course. I can use all of those styles again. So I can just go up here, do some other text, and there's my heading. Yeah, exactly, yeah. And you've got this in Word as well. If uh, And now I can just switch back to body, and it's automatically, you know. It's for this file, but you can save it into your CC libraries. On these computers, it doesn't really work all that well, but you can easily do that on your own computer and then use it in any file. So I've got a massive CC library on my own <laughs> computer with you know all the styles that I use for every document. And uh, yep, yeah, exactly. Yep. Oh, in your CC libraries, it'll even just give you an option when you're making your styles. So there, if we go and uh, go to, I think it's in uh, style, oh, style options. So we've got to choose the style first and go to style options. And where is it? There's an option to save it. So no, it's not in here, but there is an option somewhere to save it to your yeah. CC libraries. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. I think it's just because these computers are kind of locked for some things. So that's it. But uh, yeah, that makes life much easier. Yeah, yeah. That's it.